Hey everyone, Mr. Schachter here with Limits Involving Infinity Part 1. Objectives for this video examine the different properties of infinite limits and revisit the good old sandwich theorem with infinite limits. Let's get started. All the limit properties we learned in the last section all apply to infinity and negative infinity. Um, so I'll let you take a quick look at these, but they're basically the same properties as x approaches positive or negative infinity. Let's take a look at an example. This one is the limit as x approaches infinity of 5x plus sine x all over x. Well, the first logical step is to split this up to the limit as x approaches infinity of 5x over x plus the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x. And uh, this part right here, the x and the x, are actually just going to simplify, giving you uh, this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 5 plus um, this thing right here, which I will just copy and paste right there. Cool. So the left one is really easy. It's just the number 5. There's no x, so there's no need to plug an infinity in. And the right function is really interesting because the numerator is a sine x. And we know sine oscillates between uh, 1 and negative 1. Um, and so this thing's not going to get too big. But, but x is actually going to infinity, right? It's getting really, 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 really big. So we've got a number like negative 1 to 1, negative 1 to 1, all divided by a super big number. This thing's going to go to 0 because the numerator can't keep up. So the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x is just 0. So the answer to the final problem is just 5. The sandwich theorem also applies for negative infinity and positive infinity. Let's take a look at a brief example. Uh, make it a little bigger. So the example we're going to look at here is our friendly function sine x over x. And we're going to examine the limit as x approaches infinity. Uh, obviously, we just figured out the answer algebraically, but we're going to try to see uh, how the sandwich theorem would apply here. So we take uh, sine x over x right here. And we're going to sandwich it between uh, negative 1 over x is my lower bound, and 1 over x is my upper bound. And these come from the fact that sine exists between negative 1 and 1. So if you have this inequality right here, and you divide through by x, you get uh, that following statement right down here. So that's what we're going to use for our upper and our lower bounds. So the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 1 over x is clearly 0 because we have a negative 1 over a really, really, really big number. That's definitely going to 0. Um, same thing right here. We've got the limit as x approaches uh, 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 infinity of 1 over x. And this is, of course, going to still give you 0 because you have 1 over a really, 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 really big number. And so therefore, since the inequality up here holds right here, the sandwich theorem applies, and we can deduce the following statement. Um, also, I mean, tabularly and graphically, and we just proved it algebraically as well. But I just wanted to showcase that the sandwich theorem does hold for infinite limits.